Welcome to the Moscow United Methodist Church. We hope you enjoy our service. Good morning. Beautiful Sunday morning we have today. Thank you all for coming to join us as we worship together in the Spirit of God near and far. We begin with some parish notes today. Uh, we have confirmation at 1130 or as quickly after the service we begin. We leave so um, we go right downstairs for confirmation today when we are concluded here um, a couple things that you do not see we are going to start again on tuesday at christian connections this week we'll have three weeks of it in the month of may i will be sending out a link and more information for those of you that are interested for this tuesday we are going to start at six o'clock instead of six fifteen and go for an hour because I have another meeting at, there's a preschool board meeting with uh, ministry representatives at seven. 
But for the first week, for Christian Connections, please bring with you, it will be virtual, your favorite Bible story. Not your verse, because we look at the Bible through stories that inspire us. So please bring your favorite story. Office hours this week, the office will be open on Tuesday and Thursday. And the donation station, we have a new month, May has begun. And so for this month, we will be collecting for Griffin Pond Animal Shelter. And you'll see the list there of items that they are in need of. This week, the items that the food pantry and dry goods pantry are most in need of are pancake mix, pasta, Pop-Tarts, and soup, and also dish soap and laundry detergent. There will be a memorial blood drive at the Daleville United Methodist Church um, this Thursday, May 6th, and the information is there for you. Please, you must make an appointment to give blood. The spring sale is coming, so please, all your stuff, keep it together. Um, and then the drop-off days are the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of June, and the sale is on the 5th of June. Please let all your friends and family and neighbors know. Um, Sunday School continues with the, your lessons uh, virtually, weekly, and... Um, Barbara will have more to share with us about Sunday School later. The prayer network is still up and running, so if you have any prayer requests, please do uh, call SIS or the office or myself. The Learning Tree Preschool is preparing for next school year, so um, please, again, invite all um, those you know that have little ones to our preschool. Any other announcements from anyone? If not, then let us be in the spirit of prayer to be centered to worship our God. Let us pray. We gather, Lord, this day from wherever we are, Lord, with our hearts together in your grace. Lord, to seek your guidance, your love, and Lord, to worship you with all that we are and all that we have. Let us, Lord, remain firm in our faith that we will be having, Lord, open hearts and open minds as we worship to completely take in all that you have to bring to us. We pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. If you will please rise for the call to worship. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, who has shown us the wonders of his unfailing love. We put our trust in you, O Lord. Lord, let the light of your face shine upon us. Our opening hymn today, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Let us sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 
please be seated. I invite Alexis Herman forward to read our first scripture reading for us. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, today's reading is from the Testament uh, from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made, complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has nothing to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister.
Thank you, Ashley. Thank you to all of the confirmands that are helping with worship today. It is their day to help with worship. A few of them cannot be here, so they will be helping next week. But again, thank you so much for that beautiful piece. Hear these words now from the Gospel of John this day. We are in chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Triple A, the American Automobile Association, the largest motor club in the country, with a Triple A membership, <clears throat> you are fully covered for they have expanded car, boat, plane, land, water, island, you name it, they will give you insurance that in case anywhere you ever go, travel to, anything goes wrong when you are on the move, they will be right there, Johnny on the spot, to save you. If you check out their webpage, their headlines include AAA membership, goes with you every mile of life's journey. Drive with peace of mind. Much more than a tow truck service, aiding drivers for more than 100 years. Amazing association to be involved with, to belong to. Did you ever think that you would be going to communal worship and have the message be a pitch, a commercial, or a selling point for the AAA. <laughs> well, it's not going to happen today. And if it ever does, question it, for sure. Worship is all about giving glory to God, never offering unpredictable promises from a club Although I understand AAA is very reputable, nothing of the world is going to cover and fully ensure protection that compares to the fullness of our God. With God, there is no fine print. God is infallible and God's word is blessedly assured. It is unchangeable, steadfast and sure. That is why our triple A of scripture today stands for abide, accept, and action. That this actually, this message this week, it could actually be part two from last week because both books come from John again. 
And we remember, right, last week's message? was follow the leader. It was all about God's love, about listening for God's voice. We are his sheep. And the gospel here, it presents the clear focus. While the other reading from the other book in, of John, it affirms Jesus' lesson. And it adds more details, much more details to it. John even uses the same words, if you look or listen to that, or group of words in both of these books. He also writes on a very personal level. These are personal words to each of us. Twice during the reading that Alexis read, he says, dear friends, dear friends. This is a reference to the relationship of share that we share in believing. It is a reference to what Jesus also said. Now, on to the metaphor today, the vine and the branches. It's one of my favorites. It reminds me of when I was a child growing up, because we had grape arbor, grape vines growing in the backyard. I always loved to go out there and play and watch them as they grew. And also, it paints such a poetic picture of Jesus' words. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, my father is the gardener. As those who truly believe, active disciples, know they are the branches that sprout, grow, flow in, out, in, and through each other, weaving together to be spiritually fruitful in faith and provide for others. The fruit we produce is valuable and it is healthy, of everlasting quality. It too reveals the qualities of our Christian character, which is cause for those seasons that we go through sometimes in life of pruning. We hear about that in those verses. That is to strengthen the reflection of Christ in our faithful character. This symbolic lesson draws clear distinction between faithful followers of Christ, those strong branches, from what some refer to as surface Christians, who only claim to believe and want to commit when they gain from proclaiming Jesus as Savior. Those persons here are represented as those branches that fall off the vine and wither away. They did not completely remain attached to the vine. Now, picturing a grapevine or any vine, they are durable and sturdy, able to weather any storm. That's Jesus. When we abide in Jesus, remain firmly attached to him, is when we are able. It is the only time that we are able to continuously have access to the nutrient that flows through Jesus, offering us energy, keeps us going, that gives us life. That is love. Love in Jesus is all we do and will ever need to grow and gain joyful living. Still in the faith-driven art of farming. One aspect yet that we haven't mentioned in detail is that of the caretaker. The farmer, in this case, the gardener, God is the gardener. The one who creates, sustains, cares for, watches over this whole transforming process. In sowing and reaping from seed to produce, 
that maintains healthy living. All is made possible through God, from God. Or the one who planted the vine from heaven that we hear of, that takes deep root within the earth soil to supply resurrection hope. Life upon life. Without God, apart from Jesus, we can do and we are nothing. That is a simple fact of our faith. Yet those who know love know God and therefore always have potential and promise. If love is present, there is the agent of life. That agent, though, it needs to be cultivated, cultivating, like gardening. It takes work, practice. Practicing begins with abiding in Jesus. Each of us has different manners of abiding with our Savior. Some of the best practices are spending time in silence. For in silence, there is a space of surrendering ourselves fully to the Spirit. When God is in absolute control, and we have more of an ability to listen, hear the voice of God directing and calling us where love is needed most. Another practice, totally opposite of silence, is through the melody, through the lyrics of hymns, of songs. Music often stirs the spirit within. It opens the channel for enduring love to enrich our being. Then there is prayer, being in communion, common union with God private place of being on the vine. And lastly, connecting in devotion with God's precious word. From abiding comes acceptance and action, which often go hand in hand together. Accepting Jesus as our conquering victorious redeemer brings us to a whole new existence that is like no other. In acceptance, we know that we are loved. Before we do anything, our God loves us. God loves us enough that he gave all of himself to die for us so we could be free from the bonds of sin and so then, we are to love and accept one another, for we are all God's children, made in God's image, have purpose in the unfolding story of salvation. Now, Jesus got in trouble, so-called trouble, many times for accepting and actively interacting or being in loving action with those that the supposed religious people of his day then, sometimes they always actually shunned them. But Jesus went to them. Those were the outcasts, the suffering. Every person that we meet, every person we know has a story and can use some loving encouragement anytime. Our compassionate actions disclose our spiritual beliefs, proclaiming to all that they are indeed loved. They belong to the living Lord. Our spiritual sprouts attached to that great vine of Jesus waiting to grow in forgiving grace. From scripture, actions which are plainly made as not acceptable in love are fear and hate that are mentioned here. 
There is no place on the vine for those. Anyone who engages in those causes harmful measures to the kingdom that we are trying to build upon the earth. Fear it shows a lack in faith and trust. It certainly involves a harder path for us to live in or accomplishing anything. And it brings all, all of the sacrificial saving actions of Christ to nothing. Think about that. There is no reason to fear. For the love that we have is fearless and hate. Hate totally contradicts the incredible passion of God and causes toxic results. Fear and hate are even more reasons why we must stand up in our faith. For God's love is true and it rises above the negatives and the ills of our society, of which there are so many. The world needs love. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God's love always involves choice and action. That is why we must have awareness of God's will in every choice we make and in every action that we take. For love expresses and it also explains the goodness of our Lord. God the gardener makes available life-giving power. We have that power. This power that is love, it overcomes the love of power, which the world is in serious need of, this love that we have over the love of power. For those who abide in Jesus, accept his sacrifice, and through action inspire the growth of relational love, passing all that is divinely received forward, know that worldly power doesn't, it does not possess redeeming qualities. And so, as branches, as disciples, we rely on this powerful love that is Christ that connects us, reminds us that we are never alone, and brings us to completeness in the abundant harvest of eternal possibilities. May we all live daily by the triple A way of shining God's glory in and through all that we say and do. Amen. I feel like I'm missing a page. Yes, I'm missing a page. <laughs> Let us stand and sing together. They'll know we are Christians by our love.
be seated. As we come to a time of prayer in the family of faith, we begin with our concerns that we wish to lift up to our God. Um, I'll begin with the list that I have. We continue to pray our weekly prayers for the pandemic, for our United Methodist denomination, our country and our leaders, our schools. We pray for Maurice Abdallah, the Betty Frabel family and the Betty Jones family. We have those unspoken requests and those who are suffering in silence. We continue to pray for Frank Sierra Sr., the Tom Knoll family, and we pray for the Kashmir family. Um, last week we prayed for Stephanie because she um, had coronavirus. And now this week it has spread through the house. Mom and dad now have the virus. So we pray for the Kashmir family. We pray for Eloise, the Eloise Wood family, and we continue to pray for Sarah Schof, who is doing a little better, but still always needs our prayers. Anyone else, any concerns? I'd like to ask for prayers for uh, a dear friend who's having family issues that are very stressful to every one of them. Um, she needs our prayers, she needs our love, and, and we need to support her. And I'm sure there's many families that are having struggling issues in this independent, separated time. Thank you very much, Nancy. Anyone else? How about joys? Our list of joys is, are signs of new life. Uh, the Confirmands assisting with worship today, they are a great group. And in a few weeks, they will have their day on Pentecost. So we look forward to that. Um, we have joy for all the children starting spring and summer sports programs and we wish them luck and that they will stay safe. Uh, we celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week and it's National Nurses Day on the 6th, so thanks be to God for the nurses who have worked very hard in the last year plus. Um, and thank our teach, so thank our teachers and our nurses in our lives for all the very important work that they do. And Barbara, would like to add to our list. Just, just a few joys for our Sunday school. Um, last week was Ryan Havenstreit's birthday, so we want to wish him a happy birthday. And this week, Peyton, Murphy got an award at school, so we're very pleased about that. I just wanted to tell you a few things that we were doing in Sunday school, and this week at um, our class, we did a volcano to show how love spreads through the lava and how it goes in little cracks and crevices, so even if you're down and out, you can always find a little hope. We've encouraged our children to be like dolphins this week and chatter a lot about how important they are and how much everybody loves them. So just a little update on Sunday School. Thank you for sharing. They are great ideas. I'd love to do the exploding <laughs> volcano. <Yeah. laughs> that yeah. must have been great fun. The video is on our YouTube channel if anybody wants to check it out. Okay, thank you. Anyways, um, I just wanted to let you know that the people at home have been enjoying our worship, and we had a comment this morning about um, from Michael Schoff about praise be to God for Ashley Greening's wonderful talent. So I just wanted to share that from our viewers at home. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, sis. Do I hear? See here. See your hand. Yes. Uh huh. But she has it all put together, right? God bless her. Good for her. Prayers. Anyone else? If not, let us begin in silent prayer in that place of common union with Christ. Let us pray.
Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray as your people, knowing that we are loved, knowing that we are Easter people. Let us, Lord, never let our celebration, our rejoicing in the Easter miracle, let it never dim in our midst, in our lives. Lord, always let us live in the resurrection spirit. And let us always, Lord, seek to do your will, to produce much fruitfulness, lasting fruitfulness in this world. Lord, let us show compassion as Jesus showed so much compassion as he walked on the earth. Lord, we need your love. So many others need your love. Let us be filled so that we may always share it with you, Lord, as our cornerstone of our lives. Lord, we pray for much this day in our hearts as well as we pray for the pandemic and our denomination, our country and our leaders, our schools. We pray for Maurice and all those who are grieving, the Wood family, the Frable family, the Jones family, the Knoll family. Lord, we pray for Frank Sierra Sr., the Kashmir family, Lord. And we pray for Sarah Shof, Lord, that she would continue to get better. And Lord, we lift up those unspoken requests and those suffering in silence. And also, Lord, we pray for Nancy's friend and for those so many families that are going through stressful times and relationships. Let them know this relational love and live always in this relational love of the vine and the branches. Lord, we ask for your touch of healing and guidance, direction, and peace to be upon all. We thank you for all the signs of new life, and we have joy in the confirmands being with us to assist in worship, using all their talents, their beautiful talents that they have. And Lord, we thank you for the, all the activities that there are for the children to do. And we praise you and rejoice in our teachers and our nurses. Lord, thank you and praise you for all of their actions. And Lord, we pray for Sarah as she enters her new home, that you would bless the home and all that happens within it. Lord, we thank you and praise you for our Sunday school, for all that they learn and share in the inventive, imaginative ways that they do it in. We thank you for birthdays, and we thank you for Peyton winning an award for doing good. And Lord, today we pray this all in Jesus' holy and sacred name. Amen. We will now have a time of celebration of Holy Communion. For those at home, if you would like to participate, please join us um, by getting crackers and bread, juice and water, so that we can all share in this common union with our God. Very sacred space. And for all here in the sanctuary, you have the cups. You get those out. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness, like an ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and near and far, connected in your grace and on these gifts that we have of bread and of cup, symbolic. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You will take your symbolic, whatever you have. We have wafer, bread, cracker. This is 
the body of Christ that is given for you. And now, for the juice, water, whatever you have this day, as we share in communion, this cup is the blood of Christ that was shed for us that we could be forgiven and have life. Let us take this in remembrance of our Savior. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give of ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our weekly reminders as we leave this place and continue to worship wherever we go and at home wherever you go. As we ponder the depth of believing and trusting in God, we are reminded that our God always takes care of us and provides us with more than we shall ever need. That empowers us to give, to think of others before ourselves. We are called to reach out in faith to those who have yet to discover the assurance that God brings to gift all people with hope and peace and unconditional love that are they're so yearning for it in our giving together as the church we shine the light of heavenly living in the shadows of the world may we ever pray as we give thanking our lord and for those who will be blessed in receiving let us pray for all Thank you for your continued contributions that make our church discipleship sustainable during these ongoing days of the pandemic. Offerings may be put in the plates on the way out if you are in the sanctuary or mailed into the church office by way of EFT or by PayPal, which is found on our webpage. And in the week ahead, in the days ahead, my friends, be blessed, sacrifice and serve in the name of Jesus. Have faith in and through everything. The promises of God will lead us to a future that is bright and is beautiful in grace. Grow every day in God's powerful, redeeming love and follow the way of Christ. May you feel a greater awareness, awareness, of the Holy Spirit's mighty and gentle presence that is conquering, victorious, and again, just blossom and open and share with all that you meet. Amen. If you'll please rise. Our closing hymn today is You Are the Seed. You can go from a branch to a seed now.
this benediction. The grace of the word of life rest upon you. The love of the source of life embrace you. And the transforming power of the breath of life help, strengthen, and surprise you this day and all days. Amen. Please be seated. And an usher will dismiss you by pew to remain in accordance with our safety precautions. Have a blessed week.